The pub's been on fire several times. The first time was when the chimney went up. It was Ryan and Alex in here. And Alex went out to book his holidays and he come back in again. He said, your pub's on fire, Steve. So we, uh, right, I said to Ryan, I said, well, what should we do? And he said, we'll go and investigate. And I said, good idea. So me and Ryan literally walked out the front. And, and I said, oh, that flames coming out the chimney and there's smoke rolling around everywhere. And I said, what should I do, Ryan? I said, should I panic or something? I said, because I've not done this before. And he said, no, he said, we'll go and pour ourselves a drink and like come up with a plan. And I said, that's a good idea. So we wandered back in there and it was full of smoke by now. There's flames coming at the fireplace and things. And we was both there pouring a drink and Ryan said, I've got the answer, Steve. I said, what is it? And he said, phone the fire brigade. I said, ah, that's a good idea. So I phoned the fire brigade and the woman said, where do you live and what's your postcode and everything else? And then she said, have you evacuated the pub yet? And I said, well, there's only Ryan in there, but he hasn't finished his drink yet. And it's like, it was the most, Fantastic day, the fire brigade turned up, they were very nice people from Safe Molten and, and they like give them a pint of cider each to make their day go a little bit better. And the strange thing was, they left the fucking pub cleaner than what the fucking cleaner does. <laughs> it was bizarre. Oh, filming. Right. Tail from Yard Town wherever I am. Yeah, tell you a little story. I used to have a shop not that far away from here and it's just like I was behind the counter the one day and four little old grannies came in. Average age, 93, 94, 95. Fantastic little old grannies, little old bastards, a lot of them. Just because they're older it doesn't mean I've got to fucking like them, some fucking assholes. But they were very nice people and I did like them and they made me smile. Right here, I was there behind the counter. One of them all of a sudden said to her friend, said, I've just been reading this book called Fifty Shades of Grey, which made my ears prick up. And I'm just like, hmm, right? Because I know all about it. And it's just like, then one of the other little old grannies said, when the bit that I liked in the book was the bit where they used the cable ties for the bondage session. And it's like, I'm going, hmm. And then the other one said, in our day, we had to use baler twine. And that did make me laugh. Did make me laugh. Little old grannies, fantastic. I always said, what's the point of them? The point of them is to make you smile. And words of wisdom, even if it is Fifty Shades of Grey. Just goes to prove the point. Because I'm an old guy, you can still think dirty. And then, woman brought in a, a poster into the shop one day. Like a big, 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 big poster. And, and there's a picture of a parrot on it. And it said on the top, Lost African Grey Parrot Will Swear. Well, I'm thinking, my mind thinks a bit strange. I've just conjured up this image of the explorer, Stanley, walking down the Okavano, whatever it is, river in Tanzania, looking for David Livingstone like he did in 1888. And after days and days of travelling, all of a sudden he comes across this big flock of African grey parrots all sat at the top of their tree saying, fuck off you wanker, fucking cunt. It's like you fat fucking pig, why don't you just fuck right off? And it's like a whole flock of African grey parrots who so just swear at everything. How fantastic is that? And then there's a woman coming in the shop with another poster. She was the leader of the WI. Take it from me, they're like a fucking pack of animals, the WI, they're ruthless. They'll cheat you, kick naked and every fucking thing else. They always did and they always do. But that's another story. And yeah, the poster she brought in was Mystery Tour over Exmoor. Stopping at Minehead for lunch. Stopping at Watcher on the way back for a cream tea. Finishing up at Limworth for fish and chips. And I'm there scratching my head. And I said, well, it's not exactly a mystery tour if you tell them where they're going. And she said, well, they won't fucking come if I don't tell them where they're going because they're all fucking weird. Right. Five ways out to woo a woman. This is a very, very difficult subject for me because 
I'm not very good at wooing women, but the woman that blew me away is massively articulate and intelligent, and she's unbelievably gorgeous and moves in big social circles, and she's just a phenomenal woman. So to try and impress her, the first thing I thought, well, I'd do something spectacular. So I did. I learned animation dramatics and shot Lord of Doom last year, which was good fun, actually. And it's like, she sort of was a little bit impressed by that. And then I stood for Parliament. It's like, yes, I'll go and stand in the general election, which I did. And it's just like, that'll impress her. But it, it didn't. And it's like, hmm, so what else am I going to do to woo the woman of my dreams? It's like, I'll learn to be articulate and intelligent. So I've learned all about her specialist subject, which is art. I am a world-leading expert on Artemisia Gentileschi, born in 1593 on July the 8th. And I know everything about her, but that didn't really work, in there. He even learned poetry. That didn't work either. Well, she's got to lower her standards just a little bit, and mine have got to go up, well, all the way, probably. It's like, I mean, what am I supposed to do? What does she want? You know, it's just, I mean, I, I could have a shave, I suppose. That might work. Hmm. story and this actually did happen in the pub when I first took the pub up on um, it was a pissing down in rain the wind sideways the doors are rattling the fires whistling the scene set and these 14 people that were sat just over here the women said tell us about the ghosts so I told them about the little girl that died here and her shoes in the bread oven and I told them about the parliamentarian that was sat here and stabbed to death and the old man in there and the person that walked through the wall and on and on and on and all the women go terrible and it's just like this one chap stood up and he says I'm an astrophysicist or some shit or something he said it's not possible for ghosts to exist they don't exist when he said I said oh, okay that's fine and he stood up and he said where's the toilets please and I said down there by the side of the bar round the back round there and round there I said but you don't want to go there and he said why not I said because that's the most haunted room in the pub and he said what a load of fucking bollocks and off he set and I jumped out the chair and I run to the door and I told everybody else Shh, I hit the kill switch on the generator, which is behind the door, and you've got 25 seconds before the lights go out. You legged it round the front of the pub, round the side of the pub, stood on a barrel underneath the toilet windows, and sure enough, he plonked himself in the middle of having a piss. The lights went out, and I put my hand through the window, and touched him on the head, and you've never heard anybody ever scream their fucking head off so much as he did, and he pissed himself, which is even better. <laughs> absolutely fantastic, and it's not made up. It just happened, and it just like, took the moment. Can't DM or fucking something. There. Uh, I've had no food. It's 153 days since this coronary, uh, whatever it is, fucking Coronation Street disease turned up. And I've had nothing to eat for weeks. I am starving and I'm desperate for a fucking shit. I need a shit and I need food. Please, God, please, if you're there, help me. Uh, uh, it's a miracle! Uh, it's a miracle! Thank you, Boris! Thank you, Boris! It's 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 happened! Uh, uh, food! Plastic! Can't eat plastic! Not recycling! Must eat food! <laughs> Hey, guys. Thank you, boys. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Hold it. <laughs> you can't make that up. Yeah, he can. Hello. You can't make that up. I don't even want to know. Don't know. Hello. How you doing? You right? Yeah, give me the bag. Come on, you have to bought me food. Just looks like something out of a horror movie. No, no, just bring the food. Good job. 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 Good job.